All right, so new video series. Um, still going to continue on with the, uh, the Porsche series that I've been working on. Unfortunately, uh, this past week, I had about two hours of video set for editing. I had not downloaded it yet. And I left my phone on top of a vehicle. And the phone is no longer with us. And consequently, neither are the videos. So, we have a... little different series uh, purchased a Toyota Camry um, a friend of mine who was having some car trouble with it and he's not very mechanically inclined I'm a little more so uh, so I decided to take flyer on it, bought it sight unseen, knew it wasn't running, those types of things. Um, the main problem with the car was the starter remained engaged at all times. Um, so consequently the battery stopped working. Uh, when I removed the starter from the car, this was stuck out in this position which we'll see once we get in here um, there's a little plunger in there that takes voltage from this side through the plunger to this side which then engages the motor and if this stays in contact you have continuity across the two posts and the only thing you can really do about that is to disconnect the battery which we did um, charged up the battery. The battery seems to have weathered the entire storm. Um, so we've got this universal rebuild kit we're going to try. Don't know if it's going to work, but 20 bucks for a rebuild kit was a lot cheaper than $100 for a starter. And since we knew that the um, starter motor was good because it was turning and it was trying to start the car with it with no key in it I might add figured we could probably uh, give this a shot and make a hopefully a quick little video out of it anyway to uh, to do this simply just have to pull the cover off the solenoid there's a little gasket behind this cover plate And um, pull both terminals off the side. And lo and behold, there's our there's our plunger with the spring that clearly had welded itself onto the contacts. We're going to set this aside. show you what these contacts look like just have a little o-ring and a cap on the outside there's a weather seal but clearly there's a groove worn into this one um, that, that shouldn't be there for you no know, see the groove right there where it welded to the plunger at some point and then once I got it out and I pushed in on the uh, starter gear, um, everything fell back into place. It wasn't, wasn't a very strong bond or weld, if you will, but it was stopping the uh, proper operation. So anyway, those are just little copper pieces that are replaceable. Um, we'll probably clean up the plunger a little bit. I don't know if that plunger is any good or not, but we're going to go with it. Um, 
this will take off the lead over to the motor. We'll also be replacing that one. Seems like we're on our seventh different size bolt in this whole thing. There it is, 14. Outer one was a 13, inner one's a 14. Pull the plastic shield off. Again, we've got a washer on the inside of all that. And then we have this bolt. We have the tab. And we also have a contact on the inside. This tab's not worn nearly as bad as the other one was. And sometimes that's where you'll get your clicking from. Um, it's got enough to pull the uh, plunger in, but not won't pull it in far enough to make contact with something that's that badly worn. So we've got a bunch of pieces, parts here. Um, just going to, uh, since this is a universal kit and may fit couple different vehicles we have a couple different pieces we'll just try to match up the ones um, that we took out as close as possible that looks to be a fairly close match maybe a little taller but we're gonna go with it uh, as far as the stud goes, go ahead and use a new stud. And possibly a new inner bushing. We got that. Got that, got that. Then the bolt hopefully fits through. May not. Yeah, bolt's not fitting through there, so we're either going to find one that's similar but bigger, or we're going to take our trusty file and just That should have it. Try the bolt. The bolt seems to want to go through now. It goes all the way in. I think we have a winner. So we'll put our pieces back together.
that, that, and that. We have a little rubber O-ring. Got one that will attach to the outside. And there actually is a washer in there um, that we do have a new one of, so we will use, as well as a new plastic cup. Place that on there. And last but not least, the new nut. torque to spec. And then we have the other side, which appears to be this one. Matches up, except it's not worn. So we will go with Same thing on the stud, we're going to have to file it out a little bit. I don't know if I'll include that part. There you go. Got that. Got your stud. We have an O-ring on the outside. I do believe I'm gonna reuse this. It's got an O-ring on it. that uh, did not come in the kit. It's got a little tab to hold it in place. Just seems like a little bit better, a little bit better part. So we'll put that on there. Come on. Gloves on, or put the nut on. That one actually seems like 15, because why not? Well, there's problem number one. That is not going to work. The stud in the kit is not going to, uh, not going to be long enough. This is the side that, uh, that starter cable bolts to, and it's just not, got enough length to it. So we will be reusing stud.
stud once we unattach it. that on there that's bigger than the plastic so that I don't snap the plastic. That'll do the trick. We're going to put a nut on there as a shim. Then thread our nut onto this. stud tight now the stud seated should just be a matter of tightening this I don't know why they give you this thin little nut it just makes things so much more complicated much more than it has to be I think I just found our other solution. We've got a better nut. So we're going to leave that one in the kit. We will place our o ring. Just a weather seal, I imagine, to keep water and moisture out. We'll place our plastic retainer that also has an additional weather seal on it. That tab snaps into a hole that's on the side of the solenoid. And then we have the nut that we just found, which probably will give us enough. So not only is it not as wide, it appears to be a smaller nut. There we go. I do believe we're tight. Yeah. Not much better of a bite, but it's slightly better. Yeah, it's tight. Okay, so we've got tight on both sides. Uh, this side, I'm going to straighten up just a little bit. on there. The plastic 
Yeah, plastic broke. Doesn't make sense how they have this piece over here. I'll try to show you. Um, you got this copper tab coming off the lead that goes into the starter motor. I just lost that. And it is not offset. And it is supposed to go down inside of this cup. It doesn't appear to want to do that. I don't know if we need a bigger washer in there. I do know that it's a piece of plastic. And the piece of plastic that was in there before it worked just fine. So our solution is to reuse the plastic on both sides. And the nut. That appears to have enough clearance where it's not going to give it any trouble. Click. Torque to spec. I'm just kidding about that. Of course, there's probably is a spec on this and clearly I don't know what it is so we're gonna go with this put this nut back on that's going to be the attachment for the new uh, battery cable and then all we need now is the old plunger, which I know I set down somewhere. There it is. Now with this, there's probably some cleaning up that could be done to it, but I do believe with the new contacts in here being thicker, um, They should have adequate contact. This one's not in great condition, so uh, for about six bucks, you can pick these up on uh, on eBay, um, new. So it's probably worth the investment. Had I known. How cheap they are, I probably would have had one ready for this video, but alas, I do not. So that's it for the solenoid rebuild. We'll put the gasket back on. Oh, yes, and some of these will have another stud here for the, uh, I call it the exciter wire, um, to attach to. This one has a plug instead, and it is soldered on inside the starter itself so there's really nothing nothing really to do there um other than install it the solenoid kit that is that's relatively clean we're going to put a little dab of grease in there um because that does turn inside of here this is a uh, kind of a guide like piece lithium grease would probably work just fine if we had it um, we do not have it so going with the next best thing which is a little bit of silicone grease dielectric would probably work as well in a, uh, a situation like this um, well, like I said, we had some silicone. That's what's in the box. That's what we're going to use. Three retaining bolts to put the cup.
cover back on. I believe they are seven millimeter. They are seven millimeter. Everybody should believe something. And that should do it. Um, I'm gonna have a few more videos on this vehicle. There's there's some work to be done to it. Um, bought it as a temporary form of transportation for one of the boys uh, while we fix and sell his current vehicle. Um, didn't didn't want too much of an investment into something that uh, was going to be super temporary, but wanted something that was reliable. Uh, I think Toyotas have a pretty good reputation for their reliability. Uh, so we went with it. Um, car's nothing to really look at. I'm not really a Toyota guy, but there's no denying their reliability. And right now I just need something that's going to make it for three or four months while we get his taken care of. So anyway, thanks for... Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, I will get back to the uh, Boxster series. Uh, I, I have, I had about two hours of video prepared um, on manifold removal. There was some of the typical, here's how you take out broken studs in there. Uh, that was all lost. So we're going to, we're going to put the manifolds on it and we are going to, uh, flip it over, figure out what injectors we want to put in it, put the intake manifold on it, and then uh, change a venue, take it down to the uh, where the vehicle is, and begin with the installation videos, which I'm pretty excited about. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want to watch this Toyota video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in the... Uh, Boxster video, the engine swap on the Boxster. Um, I'll leave a link down in the bottom here where you can link over to that and watch some of the videos in the series. Um, otherwise, appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Have a good day.